Hello everybody and welcome back to a new episode of Lesser Known History. Today we will be talking about the Northern Renaissance, specifically the part of the Northern Renaissance that happened in France and the Low. So, top right in. So, what was the Northern Renaissance? So the Northern Renaissance was more localized. What I mean by this is in Italy, you saw many of the different city-states having their own form of the Renaissance, but it was all kind of interconnected because of the church. In the Northern Renaissance, it was focused more along city-states or just large cultural centers that interacted somewhat, but because of the fractured state of these countries at the time, with the exception of France, it made it harder for them to interact with each other. But you will see some things that carried across all parts of the Northern Renaissance. It was way more politically centralized. Again, the city-states in Europe kind of did their own thing. While in the Northern Renaissance, you had kings in France and England and in the Holy Roman Empire that really did their best to diffuse some of these ideas and sponsored a lot of the workings. It doomed feudalism. So while the Black Death really destroyed feudalism in Italy, it did so a little less in other parts of Europe. It really took the Renaissance's ideas to destroy it and put it firmly into history where it belonged. Um, but you will see some of the influences of the Black Death and some of the other pandemics that happened at the time in the influence of some of these paintings. So it was much wider in scope as well. Um, we're talking more literature, more music, and more art, and, but more science. And when you get eventually into the Spanish and Portuguese and English sides of all of this, that's really where it shines through. Some of the new tools to create art with happened in Germany, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later on. And it created different styles of painting and portraiture. We will talk more about that specifically when we cover the English side of the Renaissance. All right, let's talk about the French Renaissance. It started much later than the other parts of the Renaissance and the other areas, such as in Germany. Why? Well, war in the plague. France was one of the hardest hit places with the Black Death and was still fighting England off and on, off and on. And so it took forever for these ideas to spread and at least get a good foothold. Now, while they did create different types of paintings, such as mannerism, which eventually evolved into Baroque art, which is a whole nother topic for a whole nother time, originally it was mainly architecture and music, and as you can see off onto the other side of the screen, you can see these Renaissance-style chateaus that were built all over France and the French countryside. They're really pretty. And so that's what it started out as, but it eventually developed more into painting and mannerism, which is a topic in and of itself. But French painting from the Renaissance eventually inspired Baroque art, and Baroque art is the next big movement of painting, and it originated out of France. So you can see that connection. All right, let's talk about the Low Countries. So Robert Campin's paintings in the 1420s and 14 earlys. Let's talk about the Low Countries. Robert Campin's paintings in the 1420s and 1430s inspired Renaissance realism, but was not accepted until the Italians accepted it, and then it became much more widespread. So. In order for the Renaissance to get into the Low Countries, first the King Francis I of France commissioned some Italian artists. As you know previously, Leonardo da Vinci was one of these people. So he brings them to Paris, and from there their art is distributed. It goes all the way up into the Low Countries. For those of you that don't know the Low Countries, we're talking about Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. And so at this time, these countries were under the domain of, or nominal domain, of the Habsburgs and of Burgundy and it, it, during this whole time period. So it was very, very filled with unrest. Nevertheless, there were some really interesting styles of art that were created here. Ideas spread faster than art style. And so what, what we mean by that is, so the style of the Renaissance did not make it fully up there for a while, but before it hit there, um, ideas such as humanism were present much longer or much before the art styles of the Renaissance happen. But eventually the artists in France and the Low Countries turn towards Rome for inspiration, and they become what are called Romanists. So they go ahead and emulate the styles of the Italian artists from the Italian city-states. And that's why you see this really, really interesting mix in style between the two 
places. As you can see right there, there's a picture of King Francis I of France, and he is the one who helps to jumpstart the Renaissance in this area. All right, guys. As is tradition, we always talk about a famous artist or a couple artists from this time period, and this is no different. Today, we will talk about Peter Bruegel the Elder. So, he was born in Breda, which is in the present-day Netherlands, and he dropped the H in his original name in order to Latinize it. So, uh, in his last name, Bruegel, the H was between the G and the E. His son, Peter Bruegel the Younger, actually keeps the H in his name, so there's a little bit of difference there. He wanted to Latinize it because he was enraptured with what was going on in the, well, Latin world. And by Latin world, we mean Italy. He was the leader of the Dutch Golden Age of painting, and he painted landscapes and peasant life. And so what do we mean by that? Well, he would, of course, paint landscapes of what was going on in the Dutch countryside, but he focused on peasants as they worked in their fields. And that made him so much different from all the other artists who you know, either painted very regal scenes of royalty, or in most cases with the Renaissance, it was very much about religion. So he kind of diverged from that. He was also called Peasant Bruegel um, because, of course, he painted peasants personally. I think it should have been Peasant Peter. That would have been much better with alliteration, but I digress. He also created some prints, and this is a specific thing that started to happen in the northern parts of Europe as the printing press started to go around, and that is something we'll talk about in a, another part of this series. And he became the embodiment of the fusion between the Northern tradition and the new Renaissance styles. So it wasn't as focused on religion as other places, but he incorporated some Renaissance ideas and traditional Northern Gothic styles of painting and put them together. And we're going to go ahead and take a look at one of his pieces of art. He's one of his most famous ones, one of my favorites. And as you can see, there, there he is in his self-portrait that he made. So this here is one of his most... So this here is one of his most famous pieces of artwork, and it is one of my favorites. It's called The Triumph of Death. And so, of course, you can immediately see the influence of the Black Death that had occurred during this time. And we can kind of break this down to kind of show you what exactly, what style he was using. So look at this painting through the foreground. Look at the background. You can see the landscape out in the back. That's more of a Dutch traditional style, but so many of the people there. Yes, you see a king. Yes, you see some soldiers, but the vast majority of them are peasants. And so this already emulates his style, but you can really see the influences of the people that had died during the plague. Look at the army of skeletons as they came marching to conquer and the important message of this is that regardless of your stature in life, whether you are a peasant or a king, death comes for everybody. And this is supposed to emulate death coming for them all and it overwhelming all the people that uh, the plague did end up killing in real life. So you can really see that trauma here. I want to thank everybody who watched this episode of Lesser Known History, and I hope you are enjoying our coverage of the Renaissance the next part of the Northern Renaissance will be coming up very soon, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe. We are very rapidly gaining subscribers, and I could not be more happy than that. Um, thank you guys so much for all your support, and I will see you in the next episode. Have a great day.